Mass and heat transfer column modeling has been added to Promax 4.0. And so this gives us a second method that we can use for modeling columns within Promax. Promax has always included the ability to model columns using an ideal stage model. And that model includes converting actual trays into ideal stages and modeling it that way. And now with this second method using mass transfer models, we can represent columns with the real number of trays and do the calculations that way. So I want to show you how I can convert an aiming system that was set up as an ideal stage model and convert those columns into mass transfer models. We have here an absorber that includes 20 real trays and so with the ideal stage model we modeled that as six ideal stages since each of those trays is about 30 to 33 percent efficient. And with our stripper column, it's also 20 trays, and so we've used 10 ideal stages to represent those trays since they're about 50 percent efficient. Now we want to convert this model into a mass transfer model, so I'm going to open up the absorber, and the very first thing I need to do on the connections tab is change this to the actual number of trays. So I'm going to type in 20 stages since that's the actual number that we have. Next, if I go to the process data tab, you see that I can switch this now to mass and heat transfer modeling. And after I've made that choice in my column type, I again need to select my T-suite absorber stripper method since we're still dealing with those types of reactions. There's a couple other factors we have here down below, a heat transfer factor and interfacial area factor. And so these are multipliers we can use to affect the heat transfer and interfacial area within Promax. And so these are multipliers we can use to adjust the predicted performance of our model. But we'll leave those as the defaults of one. Now if I come down to my hardware to the general tab, we'll see here that I'm using trays and I've entered in the diameter and system factor and underneath the tray section I have my tray spacing and weir height along with things like my active area all specified out and so we've specified the internals and now it's going to use those internals to do this mass transfer modeling so I can go ahead and execute my project from there execute my absorber and see how that looks now and now we just need to do the exact same thing for our stripper column so now I'll open up the stripper and once again we need to change to our actual number of stages so I'll type in 20 stages here on the process data I again switch to mass and heat transfer and choose the T-suite column type now to show you kind of what's happening behind the scenes on this mass transfer section here we have the correlations that are being used and so you'll see that we have correlations for our tray mass transfer. We also have correlations for packing type situations and we have a model we're using to represent the mixing within our column. And the defaults are, are good in general. If you'd like to learn more about these correlations you can look in our help files or give us a call and we can have a good discussion on that. But we'll leave these as the defaults in both our absorber and our stripper column. And I'll also show you the second tab here, these mass transfer multipliers. These multipliers allow us to adjust the mass transfer of each individual component on each stage. And so these are more multipliers that we have to allow us to adjust our predicted performance within this model. And so that's kind of some behind the scenes information for you. Once again, if I go to the hardware section, I'll need to input my column internals. So for an aiming stripper column in the ideal stage model, we didn't need to enter our internal information. But for mass transfer columns, we always need these internals to be known. And so I'll go ahead and type in a 50 inch diameter and change my system factor to 0.8. And then in the tray section, I'll once again type in that I have two feet of spacing and a two inch weir height. And so now all my internals are entered and we can again converge this model. Now we haven't done a packed column, but I want to explain to you how packed columns work real quickly. If you were to choose random packing or structured packing, 
you would see a list of different packing types that you could choose from along with their flooding model that they'll use for calculations and then at the top you'd see a total height and so mass transfer columns allow us to input the actual height of packing that we have and the calculations will be based on that actual height what this means is that we don't actually have stages or trays in our packed model and so these stages what they really represent if we're using a packed model is the increments so the increments that our calculations are broken up into as a general rule of thumb you'll want to use one increment for every 0.5 meters of packing you have so we could say about one increment for every one to two feet of packing as an example if we did have 40 feet of packing that would mean we want to use 20 to 40 increments is what these stages represent and so that's how packing columns would work but going back to our trays we've entered all the information we needed to as far as in our general tab and in the tray section as well we could close this and then execute our project I have this already executed for me on this second tab so I'll come over here to show you the results you'll see they're very similar results and now we've used this second type of modeling this mass and heat transfer column modeling in order to do our modeling within Promax